special edition of 11 Live News Investigates. I'm senior investigative reporter Rebecca Lindstrom. We want to talk about guardrails, the metal barriers that line our state routes and freeways designed to protect us should our vehicle go off the road. Three years ago, we discovered that some of these sections were built using the wrong parts. It is a discovery that eventually led the Georgia Department of Transportation to launch a statewide audit of its entire system, finding hundreds of problems that are now being fixed. Most of us zoom past the guardrails along our freeways without giving them much thought. But for Kathy and Mark Alonzo, that changed the day their daughter died. As soon as I saw the car, I started crying. And I said, this isn't gonna be good. I can't even recognize her car. Isabella died four years ago after crashing head on into what her parents say was a Frankenstein guardrail section on I-75 in Peach County. Frankenstein because it was built with mixed match parts, essentially pieces from different manufacturers. Who would have ever thought about the guardrails, if they're safe or not safe? This is the section that's causing so much concern, the end of each guardrail treatment. There's just no way to know how it will respond when you start mixing parts and pieces because it's not crash tested that way. 11 Alive News investigates found at least three guardrail sections installed incorrectly. Then road safety advocate Steve Imers found even more. It's got to be two or three dozen, and I have not covered but a fraction of the roads in Georgia. While the Georgia Department of Transportation told us in 2022 it didn't believe this was a widespread issue, it did agree to do a system-wide audit. You did this audit. You're about two years in. What did you guys find? Roughly about 1,400 that had installation issues. According to inspection reports, more than half of those were Frankenstein. If there's a bolt on that that comes from a different model, it is no longer a qualified product. It should no longer be on our roadway. GDOT spokesperson Natalie Dale says the other half had a critical piece installed backwards. It's flipped. You don't have that curved space there. For the guardrail to slide through. Right, and so this could impede that movement when struck, which would cause it to be more rigid, which would cause sort of a higher severity in the crash. Dale says the installation errors represent less than 2% of the state's guardrail system. We held her hand while she passed away. There is no way to know what would have happened had this guardrail been properly installed. I would never want any other family to have to go through what we've gone through. Dale says there is now a system in place to keep deficient sections off the road. The conversation with y'all started in part as a really sort of opening our eyes to the issue of, of mix match parts, of installation issues on our roadway. And Dale says it helped fuel changes to track and inspect repairs and better train the people making them. Our training was not where it is today. And that's the important part of where we're sitting now. Where we were sitting, is the Guardrail Garden, a new training site for GDOT employees and contractors to get hands-on experience. It was certainly based on conversations that we had with your team at 11, that we are where we are today and where other states are going to be because it's become sort of a national standard, a national conversation. GDOT says it has spent $5 million so far trying to identify problems. As it has combed the state, looking closely at its guardrails, it's also tried to identify all of the x light end terminals. Now, that is a type of guardrail that some states have banned. And in 2021, reporter Kristen Crowley explained why. Do you remember the last time you spoke to her? It was in our drive. Yeah. Steve Eimers can't remember exactly what he said. <sighs> He didn't know that conversation was in our driveway would be their last. We never saw her again. At 17 years old, his daughter Hannah was killed in a crash just across the Georgia border in Tennessee. What a guardrail going through a car will do to a body. A wrongful death lawsuit alleges Hannah crashed into an X-Lite guardrail which then failed to telescope like it's designed to do. Instead, attorneys say it pierced through the car, through Hannah. And the suit argues it wasn't the first time the X-Lite 
failed. It cuts people in half and decapitates them. We contacted every state's Department of Transportation across the country. 29, including Georgia, said the X light was installed on their roads at some point. Less than a year after Hannah's death, Tennessee began removing them from its highways. It sent out this letter to the Federal Highway Administration saying the state believes the product does not provide adequate protection of motorists based on crashes where the rail penetrated a vehicle cabin. 17 other states followed Tennessee's lead in removing them. Georgia did not. And as many as 300 x light guardrails are still on its roads today. The Georgia Department of Transportation declined to comment on camera about why it will not remove the guardrails from Georgia roads. GDOT confirms 300 x lights were sold to contractors in the state. But when we asked where those guardrails were installed, a spokesperson gave us nine known locations. Tracking down the rest, it said, would cost us. How much? $97,000. That's because GDOT doesn't know where all the x light guardrails are. It doesn't keep track. It's, you know, potentially 300 pieces of, of rail that are waiting to pierce a, pierce a firewall and go into a vehicle. And that's too many. Leslie Kroger is an attorney who says her firm filed four lawsuits involving five deaths tied to x light guardrails, including the death of Hannah Eimers. Do you think it's fair to say it's only a matter of time before somebody hits one of these guardrails and gets injured or killed by them like your clients have? Un unfortunately, that is a very real possibility. Because there's enough evidence, in your opinion, that these should be taken off the roads. I will say I would I would not want to drive next to one. Making sure people aren't driving next to one is Steve's mission. But he says he keeps hitting roadblocks trying to get Georgia DOT to remove the X light. I want to be able to say when I get a call from somebody in Georgia, I did everything in my power to stop and prevent what happened to your loved one. And I'm sorry, they didn't listen. They will eventually. During our investigation, GDOT did remove all of the x light and terminals along I-75 in Henry County. And as part of its investigation, it found about a dozen more, which it says have either been replaced or are scheduled to be removed. Guardrail, even when properly installed, can be dangerous. GDOT says it is here to prevent something worse from happening, like going down an embankment. It is not a pillow. But when it is not properly installed, the first family you met says the state should be held accountable. For 18 years, this room changed every year. And here's her room. It's pretty much just like she left it, pretty much. It stopped changing in 2020. She should be here. She should be in college. She should be living her life. Isabella Alonzo lost her life after crashing into a guardrail on I-75 in Peach County. Instead of cushioning the crash, the rail impaled her car. Our investigation found it failed because it was made with parts from different manufacturers that don't work together. It's known as a Frankenstein guardrail, the result of an installation error that should never be on the road. The Alonzos are suing the Department of Transportation, but they say even if they win, justice won't be served. They have a limitation of $2 million that you can sue them for, and they, they don't even want to do that. I mean, my daughter's life was priceless. If it was a private corporation, they would be responsible for whatever a jury decided. But since it's the state, we unfortunately have to deal with the, the caps. Attorney Michael Rupersberg says that cap hasn't changed in two decades. $2 million for a death and $1 million for personal injury. It's a limit, he says, needs to change. 15 states, including Washington, D.C., have no caps. Rupersberg says having a cap could make roads 
less safe. It doesn't provide much of a penalty uh, or incentive for them to go out and proactively maintain their, their roadways like they should be. 11 Alive uncovered the Frankenstein guardrail Isabella hit in 2020 was on the road for years. It wasn't until just weeks after our investigation aired that GDOT announced it would inspect every guardrail in the state to make sure they're safe to be on Georgia roads. Rubersburg says they should have done that from the beginning. GDOT supervisors are supposed to do what is called ride the routes, ride each route on their district on a regular basis. Some districts try to do that once a month. Some districts try to do it once a quarter. Because regular basis is up to interpretation, basically. That's right. Not only did GDOT miss identifying the Frankenstein rail Isabella hit, it never caught these three Frankenstein guardrails we found, all of them on Georgia roads for more than a year. When we alerted GDOT about them, they were removed within days. So in that year time, no GDOT contractor ever noticed that was a dangerous guardrail. So if they're doing their job, they should be finding the Frankenstein guardrails like that. And the fact that it was there for a year tells me they weren't doing the job or they weren't doing it well. Just another reason Rupersburg says it is time for the laws affecting GDOT to change to ensure driver safety, a change the Alonzos desperately want to see. It's devastating. We lost a child. Her brothers lost a sister, her grandparents, her friends. People, I mean, people really loved her. After a three-year fight, GDOT did settle with the family in March. The state admitted no wrongdoing, but paid that $2 million cap. The family says it had to share that money with the attorneys, as well as the health insurance company that provided Isabella Care. Thank you for watching this special edition of 11 Alive News Investigates. If you have a tip for Rebecca Lindstrom and the 11 Alive Investigates team, call us at 404-873-9111 or email investigates at 11alive.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. <laughs>